the yeah. way. Yeah. The swamp. Oh. You know what? They, they'd take ugly wins. They'd take <laughs> any kind of anything. Right <laughs> and they'd just take wins, period, right now. Yeah, Florida man. has given up 123 points in its last three games. Second worst stretch in about a century. So Dan Mullen fired his defensive coordinator, Todd Grantham, and his offensive line coach, John Hevesy, both longtime Mullen assistants, especially Hevesy. Now, I talked with Dan at length on the phone earlier this week and asked, Ask him just how this got so sideways, and there's never really one answer, but some of the things, maybe attention to detail had slipped a little bit. Maybe there needs to be more accountability among the players and from the coaches to there, and maybe they needed to find a better way to bond. Now, you think back, and I know it's a coincidence, but since Marco Wilson threw that shoe, the Gators are a sorry two and eight against FBS competition, and coincidence or not, Florida needs a reboot. I'm the head coach, so it, I, I bear it, all of it. It's on my shoulders. You know, I'm the one that's responsible for this program. One of the ways you look, say, it's a successful season is are you a better team at the end of the year than you were at the beginning of the year? Looking at where we're at right now, we're not better than we were earlier in the year. In fact, we're worse. It's never as good as it, it seems, never as bad as it seems. Yeah. I could have said that about this season up until Saturday. I think I was pretty set that I was going to make some changes at the end of the year and thought, man, if we're going to do it at the end of the year, let's do it now, move on, and... Uh, to sit there and say that everything's been fixed within the program, I can't say that. What I can say is I want to just see and what this does and how we go perform and play on Saturday. Uh, we need to play at a much higher level than we did last week. Well, Mullen has been honest, been straightforward. It's not good enough. He's trying to find ways to fix it. These are some of the things that have happened. They've been losing some commits. I think the whole recruiting comedy made after the Georgia game was taken out of context and overblown. But they still need to recruit better. A guy who knows Florida as well as anyone is our colleague and friend, Tim Tebow. So, Tim, one week it's been penalties. The next it'll be turnovers. It's just been sort of sloppy. What does Dan Mullen need to do to fix this? Well, I think he's doing it. I think he's going to bring in some new blood and coaches. And I, and I really want to emphasize what a big deal it is. It's not just assistant coaches. Those are very close family friends. Coach Hevesy was there before I was there at Florida with Dan Mullen. They're extremely close. Their families are close. Coach Grantham, their families are close. Close. That's a really big move for Coach Mullen to make. And I think he's going to bring in some really good coaches. But I also agree with what he said. It, they're not that far off, right? It's never as good as it seems. It's never as bad as it seems. This is a team when they're playing well that they can play with Alabama. They can play with Georgia, but they've also played down to the level of some competition, especially last week in South Carolina. And I, I think sometimes as fans, you sit back and you just see the results and you don't always look at why. But it's, it's, it's not that big of a margin between them and the really good teams in the SEC right now. And if there's just a few things that kind of get shirred up, and I think one of them is leadership and, and figuring out who the next quarterback's going to be in a couple of defensive spots, I think all of a sudden you can see Florida get back to being a really good team and a team that honestly is very close to competing for championships. They're, they're not as far away as their record would indicate. As Tim Tebow from Knoxville, Georgia, and Tennessee, SEC Nations there a little bit later on. I mean, they have, they have had some close games, but I don't think they're close to contending out the way they're playing right now. No, no, I, I disagree with what Tim's saying. I, I think the, there needs to be a different approach. The reality in 2021 is when you have a team that is capable of winning a championship or maybe making a playoff, this team was 3-1 and one and ranked 10th in the nation, and then things got sideways after the loss to Kentucky. In my opinion, you can lose a team because they start to become more individually focused on whatever their aspirations are. I think that's happened to Florida last year when the opt-outs for the bowl game, and I think it's happened again this year. You're seeing a team that's quitting on each other. They're quitting on their coach. That's not, we're, we're just a couple adjustments and we're back. There's a spirit that's missing on, in that locker room. That's a problem. So I think you got to reevaluate who you recruit and who you bring on that roster, not just tweak a couple things, in my opinion. I think you, uh, I think you hit on the head. I think it's recruiting. You, you look at the best coaches in the, in the nation consistently, the teams at the top, it's recruiting. Mm -hmm. I mean, and Florida's not a place that that's hard to do. They, they've got a pedigree. They've got a background. So, you know, Dan's got to bring in guys. And listen, the thought that all these coaches across college football, all these assistant coaches are great X's and O's guys is not right. You got to get the Jimmys and the Joes. It makes you look really, really good. So you have to get guys that they live, eat, sleep, breathe recruiting. Florida should be a place that gets top recruiting classes every single year. Well, the Gators can get the athletes, and just like Alabama gets athletes. But the biggest difference is once you get to Tuscaloosa, 
Nick Saban and that staff, they break you down and they build you up and they develop you for their program. Yep. That's not happening in Gainesville. I read an article from some coaches that coached against the Gators. They said these guys are undisciplined. They have no juice. They were really surprised of the, the performance or lack thereof of the Gators when they played against them. This is not the Florida Gators that just gave, don't forget Dan Mullen, a contract extension during the offseason, making him the third highest paid coach in the SEC. And that's saying a lot, because coaches in the SEC, they getting bags. Yeah. So <laughs> on, the, on, the, on the heels of that, to come out here and play this, yeah. this way, there's a lot there. You can recruit guys, but you got to develop them when you get them on campus. It, yeah. Despite what social media tells you, it's a, still a team game. The, the object is still to win 100%. the football game. A goal, Absolutely. Going to the NFL, and that, that's a goal, it should yeah. be a goal of yours. Absolutely. But in the meantime, we're here to win games. Yeah. That's what Nick Saban does. Social media is not always right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. social media, it's, it's about your brand and all that. It's about <laughs> winning the game. That, that, bothers, the game. You, that bothers you yeah. so bad. No, I, no. I think there, there's one thing for sure about the recruiting. You can have great players and find a way to lose. But you're not winning without them. Nope. You know? I mean, you, you better, you better <laughs> heard, a, heard a wise man say. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.